Welcome. We are on lesson five today. This is Grace. Hello, Say hello. again. <laughs> and we're going to be painting pandas. So we're going to go ahead and just quickly talk about the different strokes that you're going to be using today. And you can take a look at um, the project. If we go to the table here, I think you can see the panda. There we go. So this is what we're going to be doing today. And we're gonna just do some quick practice with our strokes, reminder of how to hold the brush. And we'll get started with that. So I'm gonna push this over to the side here. And we're going to start uh, all the strokes that we've had so far in our previous lessons are all going to be useful today. So we'll do a quick, quick review here of how to do the bamboo where you are using your brush to make your line. And it's all in the pressure. And you notice I have like a dark line on the side. So if you wanna make sure that that's going to work for you that way, you get some black on your brush. This is my practice paper. So I'm gonna see how dark it is. I think I want more water. It's always good to do that. And then right as I get ready, I'm gonna put a tip on one side of my brush there, and then I'm going to press down and it makes a little bit darker line. Probably should do a little bit more of the black on there. And now I'm going to, there we go. All right, so that's our stock. You can go ahead and try that. Uh, we also have our fine lines. We can practice that. Well, you're getting yourself set up there. Our fine lines, the brush, it, the bristles and the brush are together and we barely touch the paper and that makes our fine lines. That's where our branches will come out from there. And when you stop, it'll have like a little dot of extra dark on the end. As we remember from the past, our bamboo leaves. We can practice those also. So I'm gonna here, press it down, pull, pull the pressure off, and it goes to a point. I want to make my leaves different colors. It's all dependent on the amount of water in relationship to the pigment, the color of the ink that we're using. So practice this stroke. We're that way in groups of four and five. I'll do it quickly. Make this one a little darker so that it there we go. There you go. Very nice. Now I'll grab another practice paper or you can use the same one because these are just practice strokes. This is a reminder of uh, the wild orchid, the grass and the twisting to narrow it and then the pressure so that you get this nice little twisting effect like grasses will do in nature. Try that on another piece of paper too. I have plenty of practice paper. And I'm gonna just take this over to the side and I will use it as my checking my color paper. <laughs> there we go. 
come up like there we go twist it to a point then pressure and pull off some are longer some are shorter some go in the other direction so it's just practicing the lines oh really nice job on you removing that pressure twisting your brush and then go back there you go. All right. Fold this in half and have it here as my extra sheet of checking the color paper. <laughs> I have this paper, and we're going to start. First part of what we're going to do is making this uh, round for the face, and then we're going to move on to the body. And if you look at this, what does that resemble? A G. A letter G. Yeah. If you can make a circle, you can make the letter G. We've got the basic body and head for our panda. So we're going to go ahead and practice that. I'm going to show you how to make the circle students have always had a little frustration with that if you try to make a perfect circle in one stroke you're probably going to get yourself very frustrated what i like to do is two half circles so i decide where on my paper i want it to go and i get about a third of the way up you might decide some other place on your paper that's fine so we're going to start with making, and not too dark. That's a, probably a pretty good color. I could make it a little lighter. And I'm going to make a half circle. Then I'm gonna go on this side and I'm gonna make the other half circle. There we go. And now I'm going to make the body, which is the letter G. A really nice G. Okay, now the next step with making this will be the ears. The ears are very dark, so I'm going to go with a nice dark color. It's not at the very top. You're going to make two circles. In fact, it's going to look like it's a four-eyed creature <laughs> a little bit here. So you're going to do one here. That's one ear and another ear over here. Then I'm going to do my eyes right there. I'm going to use barely, make sure that your brush is all together on the tip. And you're going to put very little pressure. But now we're going to do a dot for the nose and then a For the mouth. It's like a bird flying in the air there. <laughs> okay, now to make the arms, we're going to use a nice amount of black. It should be a lot darker than this part because that's a, a very dark part of the panda. It's, it's arms and its legs. It has a white body. And I'm going to start here, put some pressure. I'm going to follow around. When I get about here to the mouth, I'm going to make this a little wider and kind of go back. And there's his arm or her arm. I don't know. And then the other arm is going to get close here, but not touch it. And it's going to start here. It's um, partially covered. There, there's that implied uh past the head if you were looking at it in person you probably would see it but we're working with something flat so it's implied that there's more of it behind here so we're going to come do this and stop just short of that and there's the other arm now we're going to do the leg which is going right in here 
going to start with, it's got a nice little muscle there. And then it comes down and it's a little foot, just like that. And notice my hairs are not together. You can see that I have them spread apart. That really helps with that. So there we have our panda. If I want to make another panda, I can make it going in a different direction. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that on this paper. So you can have multiple pandas in there because they do like to be in a group. And I'm gonna do a head right here. Take the ears again after I do my backwards G. <laughs> That's a backwards G. Or it's laying down sideways, whichever way you want to look at it. And then I'm going to do two little round ears. That's not very dark. I like it a little darker than that. Go back in this. There we go. Ears. There's where the eyes go. Right there and there. Dot for the nose. It's back to a point. The mouth. I do the same thing here. Arm, and then this other arm is going to come this way. It's leg. Here. And sometimes you can see a little bit of the other leg if you using the same sort of technique as you did here. Sometimes you can see the other leg. Like this one is sitting in a way that might work to have the back leg, not on this one, but that one's going to be on the other side. But this one, you could maybe possibly see another part of the leg coming out here. So you can add that. Uh, I find that under a certain age, usually under 10, uh, my students absolutely must have all four, two arms, two legs, no matter what way it's being set up, they have to see all four of them, even if it would be hidden by the body, they still have to have that one in there. And that's okay. You can go ahead and, and do that. Yours is looking very nice. So once you have decided on how to do this and where you might wanna place how many in there, you can have more than one. You might want to set up a scene, and that's where we get back to the bamboo. And um, you can add other things in there, like the grasses, or the wild orchids. Start with the new paper. Uh, it can go in any direction. You can do it the wide way. This is a much bigger piece of paper. I'm going to clean my brush a little bit. Uh, on this, though, I would start with my pandas first, and then I would add any background with bamboo. Everybody knows what do pandas eat? Bamboo. bamboo. Yes, they eat bamboo shoots. So yeah, it, it would be perfectly natural anytime you see a panda to have a background of bamboo growing, because that's where they live. So let's go ahead and you can go get started with that. This is too, too black for me. You don't want the body to be quite as dark as the rest of the panda, but this one. And I think I will just do another one. Maybe I'll do it going. Where do I want it? That's too, too black there. Check my color. So I'm going to do this little smaller panda. I'll go in and I'll do my 
increase the baby tangle? Yes, there we go. Do my ears, turn around. And actually the um, eyes are not always perfect, but it, the fur around the eyes is interesting. How perfectly round. Let me go back and fix up things a little bit. Yes. Not waking up. There we go. And then get the pressure off. Make the little kind of round at the end. Nice job on the foot. I like that. Maybe I'll take some more here. Come to the ears. Then I'm going to do my eyes. The second one. And there we go. Now I'm going to do my arm. This is the one that we see the most of. Do my arm over here. This one, we don't see quite as much of it. Don't want it to. Now we're going to do what right here. There we go. I decided that they should be eating bamboo. So if you want to have it growing, you've got some nice green. I'm going to make a little bit of mix with the black. Whoops. Good thing this is not my finished product, which is okay. drip, drip, drip. So instead of having a bright green, I'm going to make it with just a tiny bit of black, just a dot. And then I'm gonna start my bamboo here. And I, if you notice, it spreads out. So I'm gonna have just a dot and a little bit more of the water on the other side. And there we go. So I get a little variation. There we go. And let's get some nice branches going out. They grow angular. And there's usually a dot when you're lifting up the brush is perfect. If you want to change to a different size brush, then you can easily do that because this is Sometimes harder to control the size you want with the bigger brush. So I think I'll downsize to the smaller one when I'm making my leaves. So I'm going to go like this. Oh, I don't think I like this brush. So it goes to a point. So I don't like this one very much. It's not doing what I like. You have different colors. It can go from a lot of water mixed with it, so it's light, to more color on it to make it give you some depth. I think I'm going to make some bamboo that's just laying here on the ground that our little fellow is going to be munching on. So I'm going to do a branch or two. And I'm going to make smaller because they like the shoots. They like the, the young stuff. 
I'm going to do a couple of branches here and they can go right over the top of it because he's in the back of your branch. And some of the shadow tend to be further back. So I'm going to make that a little darker. Technique here. Let's see. Younger. Let's uh, make them smaller. Here. These are shoots, so they can be smaller. And when they're shoots, that's one time when they can be kind of going up a little bit. Four to five in each one. And if you want to add some grasses in here, you can certainly do that. Twist and then decide how much you want to put into it and let it let it go. You can just put some ground in here. So he's not floating in the air. Very nice. So there we have it, I could go on and probably get too much stuff in it. So there we go. That is our pair of pandas. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Apparently, uh, maybe brother and sister or mom and a teenager. <laughs> so there we have our pandas with some bamboo. All right. That's it. And we'll say goodbye. Bye. Bye-bye.